Activity types, or tools, are a core component of Frog. These are all built as plugins on top of a powerful API that makes it easy to have synchronous collaboration, uh, logging, uh, social groups, dashboards, etc. We can look at them through the activity preview, which is an interface both to help teachers explore the available tools, but which is also designed to help developers working on new or improved tools. The teacher can annotate slides and decide whether students should be in sync with the teacher or be able to move freely. The quiz supports LaTeX, shuffling the questions, inserting uh, rich media, and while the students are answering, the teacher has access to a number of dashboards. For example, a dashboard of live student answers, but also a dashboard predicting when the students will finish a task. The dashboards are key in Frog, and each activity type comes with custom-built dashboards. To see how this dashboard would look with a number of users, we can replay previous data. For example, our progress dashboard might look like this at the end of a run with 78 users, the blue bar indicating average progress of the class, and the red bar indicating the number of people who have finished the entire assignment. If we replay this at speed, we see that the stipled lines are the dynamically updated predictions about when students will finish based on the, the time taken for each assignment by the students who are already finished. We also have communication tools, such as a chat that supports rich items. Hi, Espen. Where are you right now, Espen? As well as video chat. I'm already. We have integrated JavaScript and Python snippets, where teachers can design assignments, students can run the code in the browser, and quickly execute tests, which are reflected on the teacher dashboard. We have a small statistics tool where students can play with data, in this case, birth dates and gender. I can try differentiating between genders. Of course, we cannot recreate all the activities that already exist in Frog, physics simulations, programming tasks, etc. But rather than just putting in iframes, we'd like to be able to configure them, get data in, data out, have them be social, and let the teacher orchestrate with live dashboards. And we've done some interesting experiments with a physics simulation from the WISE team in Berkeley. Let's say I choose the parameters of the simulation. And although this is only an iframe, I see that Frog is actually capturing semantically interesting uh, log files from this. But in addition to that, if we put this activity into a script, we can actually integrate with Frog activities. For example, take a screenshot, and this is then added as a component in Frog, which can then be commented, rated, um, collaboratively discussed, and so on. As a second step, we can actually uh, live stream temperature readings from uh, the simulation. And in a similar fashion, we can also live stream the temperature readings from uh, the simulation into a spreadsheet. And the goal is to talk to people who are making these components to try to come up with standards that make this kind of reuse more simple. Um, in that regard, we've also tried to expose frog activities to other systems. Here's an example of Grasp, a, a totally different platform, which now integrated the opportunity to add frog apps. And when we log in as two students, we see that the system is actually exposing a number of activity types that all support uh, live collaborative editing, such as a rich, rich text editing component, a questionnaire that is live synchronized, a visual board that allows you to add new ideas and um, synchronizes the moving of ideas. So far, I've shown individual activity types, but the strength of Frog is really connecting these together in a orchestration graph. And in this example, I want to also showcase some of the great activity types we have to work with uh, ideas and rich content types and the different kinds of rich content types that we have available. So we can start by uh, putting in a product operator which gets external content. In this case, let's say that the students have been annotating PDFs and they've used a specific hashtag, and we can quickly preview what kind of content that is going to bring us. Well, let's split the students into groups. So let's put in a social operator, and we can create groups in multiple ways. In this case, we'll just uh, create uh, two groups in the whole class. We'll split the class in two. Um, I'm going to start by having the students individually choose some of the most interesting hypothesis annotations. So I'm going to take the input from this operator, we want to send, let's say, 10 items to each group. We're going to have each student vote individually. So I'll combine the votes from all individual group members, and then I'll select the best five. So you see here that it's constantly checking the validity of the graph, and it's saying, I don't know what is the group for this group activity. Um, by the way, this is the individual plane, this is the social plane, and this is the whole class plane. So I'm going to pull that in there. And I'm going to give them a chat, just so they can coordinate a bit. This could be a video chat. And then I'm going to give them a rich text and we can quickly preview. So I'm going to have them basically write something as a group, and then I want to have other groups peer review this. So the peer review mechanism is also very flexible. I'm going to first take the output of this activity, which is a learning item, a rich text, and I'm going to wrap it in a learning item called a peer review learning item. 